I'm Jim Sakala from uh, Dino Tech Research and uh, DrumPreserve.com in Batavia, New York. We've been uh, uh, building and uh, selling nitrogen pressurization systems for uh, primarily for uh, preserving and dispensing uh, race gas. We've been doing this for a long time. And uh, more recently, we've been doing some custom uh, systems for uh, chemicals, uh, food products, and in this case this is a, a, a custom system that we put together for a pharmaceutical company. And here, this is the uh, full stainless steel bung, uh, machined out of solid uh, 304 stainless steel, and it's got all stainless steel uh, dispensing fittings, uh, ball valves, and also uh, uh, nitrogen control valves, along with uh, a 10 PSI pressure relief valve for safety and a, a 15 PSI uh, pressure gauge to monitor the pressure inside the, the drum. We've also got a, uh, a low output pressure nitrogen regulator that's uh, designed uh, especially for us, manufactured out of solid brass, and um, a normal nitrogen regulator will have an output pressure of max maximum of 120 to 150 psi, which is way too high for what we're doing. These drums have a, a typical hydrostatic test pressure of around 40 psi, and and we uh, make sure that every system has. Um, two of these high, uh, high flow uh, pressure relief valves that will blow off anything over 10 PSI. Because the most we need for uh, dispensing and protecting the, the, the uh, fluid in the drum is about 5 PSI. And on the bottom of the, uh, of the bung is a 3 8 uh, pipe, pipe thread uh, female opening. And uh, in this case, the, the customer is uh, building their own um, Teflon uh, siphon tubes that go to the bottom of the drum. Uh, and, and they're, uh, I'm not sure what their connecting fitting is like, so what I'm doing is including in, in the kit for them, the kits, this, this little extender so that they're, if they're, uh, adapter to go from the pipe thread to the uh, Teflon tube is oversized. We need to uh, move it down here to prevent interference with the uh, uh, threads in, in the bung. But to uh, demonstrate this system today, I'm going to use a, a copper half-inch uh, siphon tube that a lot of guys use it with gasoline. Uh, normally it's got a L3H pipe adapter, and in this case, it's uh, attached to this uh, copper tube with something called copper lock, which is a lot like red Loctite. I'll just pop this in here, tighten it a little bit. This is a 27 gallon um, drum uh, made of stainless steel that's sold by Kaplan Containers in Rochester, New York. Um, these, these are real handy for um, hauling uh, race gas around or chemical food. It's fine for food products because it's all laser welded. And the other thing we've got on, on these uh, stainless steel bungs is uh, irradiated uh, polyethylene seals, which is recommended for food products or most chemicals. I'm just going to attach this to the drum. Threads on real nice. So, and the drum companies uh, recommend about 40 pounds feet of torque to get a, a good seal on, on the bung top. I'm not going to use a torque wrench today. Get it nice and tight. The other thing that, that we do with these. Uh, bungs for this particular company is I've got redundant seals. I've got a, a cap on this GIC uh, threaded stainless steel fitting. So during, during storage, um, 
with nitrogen pressure on it, if somebody makes a mistake and does this, they won't lose any of their uh, valuable product out, out of the out of the drum. Plus, it'll prevent any uh, contamination from outside while it's in storage. And we have a, a redundant shutoff for the nitrogen as well. This is uh, a nitrogen hose. We were using uh, Jiffy Tight um, quick couplers, which are valved. They, they have seals on both ends, so when they're disconnected, there's a shutoff there and a shutoff here. So when once again, if somebody makes a mistake and does this while it's in storage, you won't lose the nitrogen pressure. So I'll catch that on there. I get this on pretty tight. And for the, just to demonstrate to, with water, I've got the uh, super thane ester uh, clear plastic hose, and that's fitted to uh, stainless steel GIC uh, fitting here. I'll pump around and catch that. Give that a little snug with a crescent wrench. And have to be very tight. I just got a, a water bucket that I'll demonstrate once I got it pressurized. So now it's time to uh, pressurize the headspace in the drum with five or six psi of uh, nitrogen uh, gas. Of course, nitrogen is perfect because it's completely dry, no moisture, and, and of course, no oxygen in it. I've got this uh, cylinder of uh, dry nitrogen, which is uh, this is a 60 cubic foot cylinder, and I've got that. I've got a ratchet strapped to the drum to make sure that it's uh, it's safe and won't tip over. It's, it's very important whenever you're using high pressure gas like nitrogen with a regulator attached to it that the cylinder itself be attached to uh, the wall. Uh, most welding supplies uh, sell uh, brackets that are designed to attach to the wall or to a, a solid surface to prevent tipping. And so to, to begin the uh, nitrogen pressurization process, of course the first, I've got this attached to the uh, nitrogen cylinder takes an inch, inch and an eighth wrench, which is the same uh, size of this, uh, the two flats on, on this uh, stainless steel bunk. For, so you can use the same wrench for doing both. And the other thing I like to do is open the valve wide open. There's, there's a double seat on, on these new style nitrogen valves. So if you get it wide open, it uh, prevents any possible weepage of, of the gas. So now we got, you can see we got 2,000 pounds of nitrogen pressure. And now I've got this ball valve shut off here. I'm going to just start turning this in, and you'll see the, the needle start to rise very gradually. And she's coming up there. And she, that's about 6 psi. That's fine. So, and, and once again, we got redundant uh, uh, safety relief valves here and here extra safety. I open up this valve, this pressurizes the line to, to the ball valve on, on the uh, bung. So I'm going to open this up. And as you can see, you can hear the nitrogen begin to fill there. And see so gradually the pressure is coming up on this gauge. It's up to three psi. I've got about well, 15 gallons of water in there, so there's plenty of headspace to to fill up. And this size uh, drum it takes about 10 cubic feet of nitrogen to 
uh, pressurize and uh, protect and dispense the, the fluid in the drum. So now I'm, I'm up to about 5 psi now, so with that I can demonstrate the, how, how, much, how fast the, uh, the fluid flows. And this is, uh, turn the valve on, which blows out the air. And with only 5 psi, I can wash my car with this water. Shut it off. And then again, for, for storage, what, what, what these people are planning to do is to you know, shut this off. They can disconnect this. Shut this down. And they, they would move to a different drum and, and get the fluid out of a, you know, a different fluid with the same regulator. So we can keep an eye on this gauge too. And so while it's in storage, we can we can tell that there's there's pressure there, and if, if this drops at all overnight, we know that there's a little bit of weepage around the uh, uh, in the gasket, so it just needs another tweak to, to tighten it up. So that's the the latest custom uh, drum preserver system. We keep finding new little applications like this that um, helpful for industry. So so not only the the race car people. And protect their uh, their fluids, their, their race gas, but also the uh, manufacturers of uh, pharmaceuticals and other products can do it too. Drumpreserve.com.